What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we are doing another edition of Robbie Rambles, so stay tuned. That is right, YouTube. Today we are doing another edition of Robbie Rambles. For those of you new to the channel, I haven't put one of these out in a while, so I'm just going to explain it really quickly, give you guys a bit of a heads up on what this is. First and foremost, this is not a review. This is not a review style of video either. This is basically me talking to the camera for an excess amount of time so I can get off some, get some things off my chest. It's usually unedited, uncut, so you get kind of the raw footage, you get the raw me coming out at you guys. And there's a lot of things I want to talk about that might spark some profanity here. So just a heads up and a warning to anyone who's sensitive to that kind of thing. There will be profanity and I do apologize. Also, I'll be taking vape breaks throughout the video. It's going to be a very casual style video. I'm not going to do any editing like I said before. And it's just going to be basically me talking about some things I want to talk about. So now that you have full disclosure, this isn't a review. I will give you a sneak peek for those of you who stuck around after that. Um, this is the next review I'm going to be doing. This is the iJoy Maxo Zenith or Zenith with the iJoy Maxo V12 tank on top. That's my next review coming out. That's going to be vaping on in this video in particular. But I've already vaping on it for a couple weeks now. In fact, I actually got these sent to me right around the time I actually released the video for the TFV12 versus Magnus versus um, OBS V tank. So those high power supplement tanks, this actually came in a couple days before that. I debated on doing the Maxo V12 in that tank lineup, but I decided not to because it was only a few days in. I hadn't had enough time with it to really put out a good review on it. So I decided to hold off and that's kind of what's coming up next is a combination review of these two guys right here. So what is this review about, or not this review, what is this video about then if it's not about the iJoy Zenith, if it's not about the a tank, if it's not about vape related products, what is this video about? It's about a lot of things guys and this is probably going to be a long video. I'm just going to take a guess right here right now. This is not going to be one of these you know, 7 or 8 minute long videos or even a 10 minute long video like I've been doing recently. I've been trying to get my videos cut down in length. I'm hoping this one doesn't go too long so you guys do get the experience to, to kind of listen to the whole thing and you can hear every single part I'm going to be talking about. And there's a lot to talk about, okay? I think to start things off, one of the most requested things I've gotten in all my comments section on all my videos recently has been, you have a great microphone, which I'm using right now, by the way, why does it sound like shit? And it's a perfectly viable question, and honestly, I'm going to tell you guys the truth, all right? So I've been using this microphone, which is an XLR microphone. It's an ART T4 tube microphone, super expensive microphone, which means it should be super good quality, but I haven't been getting that. And I've been doing some research, a lot of research actually, and you know the one underlying thing I've found throughout my use, my research, throughout my research, can't even talk right now. Throughout my research, this is a great idea to do a video when I can't even talk. Anyways, the one thing I've found consistent across my research is that audio quality in a video is just as important, if not more important, than the video quality itself. And to a lot of, in a lot of ways, it does add to the video quality too. So if you have a great audio sounding um, system hooked up, or you have a great, you have great audio sounding quality in your videos, it's going to improve the overall quality of the videos. And vice versa, if you have a great video but terrible microphone quality, it's going to decrease quality of your videos, which we've seen in recent videos, I think. Not to be arrogant about the video camera, but I think it's a pretty good video camera. It shoots great 1080p footage, so it does what it needs to do. I don't do 4K, at least not yet, but I'll get into that later on in a different segment, um, in the non-audio segment. But to explain what, what I've been using and to give you guys a heads up as far as what I've been doing and what I've been doing differently in this video than any other video, so I'm hoping the audio quality is much better by the way, but what I've been doing differently is one thing in particular. I've been hooking up this XLR camera, or sorry, this XLR microphone directly to my camera using this guy. This is the Beach Tech 2XA or DXA 2T. I don't know if you guys see that. It basically acts as an XLR adapter for a camera. You have the kind of three and a half millimeter jack that plugs into the camera portion, which has a microphone jack. This is kind of where that would plug into. Then you have two XLR inputs um, so you can record the video and the XLR audio together at the same time. A bunch of gain controls in the back, some other controls in the back. Um, I've tried syncing it to my camera. I've tried looking at reviews and how-to videos on this. And no matter what I try, this thing right here just comes up short every time. And the audio quality honestly becomes a bit of a joke. So. I have to apologize for that, obviously. I want to apologize for the audio quality in those videos. I feel like they would have been much better if the audio was just the way I wanted it to be. And this thing has caused me nothing but issues. 
I've gone through six or seven different, mic different microphones with this thing being the one constant and of course my camera. And with all of those in mind, what I've decided to do is run my audio separately. I'm hoping it's not out of sync. I've done some pre-work ahead of time to make sure that it becomes in sync. But I've done some different, something different here where I've actually hooked my cam or my microphone up directly to my computer this time and recording the audio separate. Now for editing purposes, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to do it, but because this is just a long, winded, you know, one cut, one take type video with no cuts in between, it's gonna be a lot easier to sync up the audio, which is why I'm doing this in a Robbie Rambles video as opposed to a review where I make several cuts, edits, different types of shots and everything, and kind of doing some different stuff as opposed to just a one style take, which this is. So that's one of the things I want to talk about. Hopefully the audio quality has improved in this video. I have no idea if it has or not. Um, from what I'm seeing on my camera right now, actually, I don't even see audio registering right now. And I think it's because I had to adjust the audio level settings on the camera itself manually in order to try and make this thing work. And even after adjusting it manually, I still can make it work. I forgot to reset the audio bars. So I'm guessing you guys aren't hearing much right now um, if it's coming through the camera, which means it can be harder to sync up in editing because usually what I'll do is I'll and I've done this a couple times in tests that I haven't released on YouTube, but I'll usually do like a clap or something so I can line up the noise perfectly and then, you know, kind of fill out the rest of the video from there. So that's one thing. And I'm saying so a lot, aren't I? I don't know. Anyways, and I'm probably saying anyways a lot too. Great. No cuts. <laughs> All or nothing. You, this is basically what I have to deal with in every single video I make. I have a lot of words I repeat. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen that already, have noticed that, have picked up. Maybe make a drinking game out of it to make it a little bit more fun or a vaping game. There you go. Anyone who wants to go through juice really quickly, vape anytime I say anyways or so in this video. Those two don't count though. I almost did it again. I almost did anyways. See what happens there? I almost said it. Moving on from there, the next thing I want to talk about, we talked about the audio. I want to talk a bit about what I have planned for the future of my audio as well as what I have planned for the future of my video and just in general. Some of you guys may have noticed, this is so hard not to say so by the way, some of you guys may have noticed that my more recent videos have been a little bit more in depth in the review style I've been doing. And that's actually come with a lot of research I've put into my videos. I don't just watch other vape reviewers, I don't just watch some of the more basic channels on YouTube. And when I say basic, I shouldn't say basic, that's not what I mean. I don't just watch more generalized videos on YouTube either. So I don't just watch vaping or generalized such as Buzzfeed or First We Feast, Hot Ones. Big shout out to Hot Ones if you're watching this, which you're not, but I would love to be on your show. Go check them out if you don't know what Hot Ones is, but Hot Ones is, by the way. The point I'm trying to say is, yes, I watch a lot of generic videos outside of vaping. I watch a lot of vaping related videos as well, but more so recently, I've actually been watching a lot more tutorial videos as far as how to really become better at doing this for you guys. And one of the things I've actually caught on to in the last couple months is something called B-roll. If you don't know what B-roll is, don't worry. I was just like that a couple months ago. If you do know what B-roll is, and maybe I was just so out of the loop that I'm like the only person who doesn't know what that means, it basically means having a second track on top of your initial track. So you have a primary track for recording and audio, then you have a second track which will show image shots or pan ins, pan outs, zooms, product highlights, things like that that you may have seen in some of my more recent videos. So basically what I do is I talk just like this for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes sometimes. I take all of that as my main track. That's my A roll. My B roll becomes all the st shots I do on top of that. The unboxings, the product highlights, the feature highlights, the dissection of certain products and things like that. That all becomes my B roll and I basically overlap it on my A roll. A roll contains my audio and video for my, my basically just me sitting here talking. And the B roll contains all the footage captured from the actual devices themselves. I didn't know what that was before. And basically what I used to do is, I mean, if, if you're not new to the channel, you know what I used to do. If you're new to the channel and you've seen some of my old videos, you know what I used to do. But basically what I used to do was take different segments and record them independently. So every segment and every time I made a change was a new recording on the camera. And it became this 30 file type video editing disaster really. That I had to that I had to contend with that was basically me sitting there recording this section okay I got to do down and dirty now so I got to move the camera over here I got to point it down at the product and I got to start talking to the camera again in the down and dirty section then I got to go back up top move the camera back onto my tripod which is where it is now obviously 
and do this the kind of ending final thoughts portion of it. Then I might fill in a couple more places where I start recording other things like, oh man, I missed, you know, I missed talking about the button on this device or I missed talking about the drip tip or, or whatever it might be. And I literally go back and record that whole thing as one separate video. And yes, you know, 30 videos for, uh, or 30 files, I guess if you want to call it, for one single production video is a lot and it's probably a bit of an exaggeration. But there was easily times when I would record 10 to 15 video segments, maybe even more. Actually, you know what? No, 30 is not a reason because I had multiple takes I do. I had multiple um, ways to word certain things and to make sure I covered it the way I wanted to, just to make sure it came out right. So 30 files is not unreasonable for what I used to be doing. Now, of course, I've found this a much, th there's a much easier way, which is basically doing the A-roll and B-roll. Now, of course, there are other things I could do to my videos, adding music in the background, things like that. I don't do that for my vape reviews because I don't want to distract from the product. And while I know people like Abby Vapes, who does a wonderful job on reviews, by the way, big shout out to Abby Vapes, um, love her videos. But if you watch her video, she does have music playing in the background and it's very subtle and it's almost relaxing and it goes with the actual video itself and it doesn't distract from the product, which honestly, if you can master that, that is amazing. You're, you're already at a very, very solid production level, but I can't, not yet at least. I haven't found the right tracks. I haven't experimented enough. And while I have been trying here and there to put audio tracks in my actual videos now, or music tracks, I should say, I've actually been dinged on that because even though I've used royalty free sites to get my music, I have had one copyright issue on one of my videos already on a site that said all I had to do was use a video free of charge, but I had to list it in the description, which I did, but for some reason I still got a strike on that. So I can't help but wonder if maybe something changed and maybe those sites are not permanent audio files or music files and they may expire with the licensing. And then after that, they may choose to renew the licensing or may choose to do it separately. And should they do it separately, then it means that basically, you know, anyone who used it during that time now has to take it down. And that was my option. Take down that video or give all ad revenue from that video to the music company. I obviously decided to leave it up because I don't care, but I do as well. And what's interesting, and that brings us to the next point. So that's kind of what I've learned, by the way. I just want to talk about my experiences and how I've been trying to improve my videos. But moving on from there and going into kind of the perfect segue of the ad revenue, and this is kind of the main topic of this video, even though it's like the third thing I've come into saying, fourth if you include the review type of stuff I've been looking at. The point I'm trying to make here in going into the ad revenue piece is how much YouTube has fucked me over. Ad revenue right now is at an all-time low by far. I had a great video come out that had a lot of great views, a lot of great comments on it, a lot of, um, maybe, maybe some, uh, you know, may, maybe some controversy to it, I guess, because people are expecting to see this, you know, solid gold and platinum and palladium type mod that was just like totally extravagant. And what they saw wasn't that, but the truth is it was a $15,000 mod. So you get what you pay for, by the way, vape for me saying so going back to on topic though, and getting back to the ad revenue piece, I want to go back to something I said a long time ago and I've stuck by ever since. I didn't start this channel to make money. Would it be nice to make some money here and there? Absolutely. Because the money goes right back into my channel. It goes into things like this microphone. It goes into things like my camera. Although I haven't actually upgraded my camera yet, it's been the same camera I've used literally since day one. In fact, the camera was purchased like two months before I started this channel. And it's actually really the reason why I started this channel is because I just invested a bunch of money into this camera. I had to find a way to use it. Why not start a YouTube channel? So that's how that came about. Um, but even things like lighting right here, and you can't see it, but I'm pointing to a light in case you didn't know. I have one light. I'd like to have a second light at one point over here to balance it out a little bit better. That's not happening. When ad revenue becomes less consistent, and part of that was my fault in the past because I wasn't posting consistently, but when it becomes less consistent, even though you've had a lot of effort put into a video and you've spent the time, you've spent the energy, you've even spent the money in investing for certain things for a certain video, for example, mods, batteries, whatever it might be, especially with the mech mods, I, you know, obviously I, I got back into mech mods basically to do that video, to be honest. Now the Dragon Mod, of course, was a separate one that I really wanted to do a review on as well. 
but I wanted to combine you know the dragon mod with something else just to give it a few more few more views here and there and sure some people say it's clickbait was it clickbait fine to some people it was but at the same time it did bring attention to a very important cause and that is you know a good friend of mine Jay who is literally down fifteen thousand dollars US for that one mod so by the way vape um, in fact, I'm gonna vape as well. I need I need a quick break here just to gather my thoughts. But before I continue, here we go. So this is a Zenith, by the way, with the iJoy Maxo V12. Take a hit off this. This is at uh, right around 4.2. I would say 4.2 volts is what it's set at in voltmeter here on the potentiometer. So let's let's take a hit. Don't have the drip either. That's a nice thing about a tank. Gotta say, I, I kind of miss that. I've been using a dripper a lot lately. And by the way, I got another dripper that's coming up for review here soon. The Tokugawa, which I am super excited to review it on. And it's funny because when I first got it, or when I first saw it, I, I should say, I wasn't a big fan of it. I was like, this, I will never buy this, this RDA. And then Jay, of course, ended up taking one for himself, building on it, and gave me one hit. And I'm like, take my money, Jay. Just take it. Just take it. I want one of these. So needless to say, there will be a review coming out on that, but this is coming up first. I owe it to iJoy. They sent me this for review. I owe them a review, so it will be coming. But after that, there will be the Tokugawa, Tokugawa RDA review coming as well. I have no idea how many people are watching right now, by the way. If you're still watching this, leave a comment down below. Comment, tom, comment Tokugawa if you're still watching this right now. I'm just curious to see how many people are actually watching this this far into the video. So leave a comment, Tokugawa, if you are still watching this. Just curious. Getting back on track, though, and talking about ad revenue again, it leads me to another thing that I want to talk about. And yes, I talked about Jay a little bit, so I'll, I'll finish off the thought process there first before I go on to the next part, portion I want to talk about. But for Jay, one thing I will have coming up as well, one of the other videos I've planned, is doing a sit-down kind of interview style with Jay so that we can talk about what happened and people can get the full story there. Because I feel like there's a lot of people who are really upset about it, but then there's a lot of people who are very insensitive about it. And I don't mean to be a dick, but let's be honest, if you're sitting there and you just you know watch a video where someone lost $15,000, I don't think you should really be commenting, you know, he deserved it or bullshit or show me proof or anything like that. Trust me, this guy lost $15,000 US, $17,000 Canadian at the time, because of a shitty manufacturer, okay? And because of a sh very sketchy person. We have their email, by the way. We have their contact information. We have everything, and I, we're deciding on whether or not to post that in this kind of breakdown video we're gonna do with me and Jay, but we'll get to that in another video. Moving back to YouTube ad revenue and why I want to bring this up, and this is not something I really wanted to ask you guys. This isn't something I really wanted to do at all, but I'm just gonna come out and say it so Obviously, my ad revenue has been cut down dramatically on what should have been a very good month for me in ad revenue sense, which, by the way, a good month is like 60, 70 bucks. Like, I don't make a lot of money on ad revenue. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here making hundreds of dollars a month even or coming even close to doing this full time. I make just enough to basically pay for some devices, pay for shipping for some of the giveaways I've done, and that's pretty much it. And that's a good month. I mean, on a bad month, I'm making about 30 to 40 bucks which is just enough to kind of cover maybe one extra device I'm gonna review for you guys here and there. So why does that matter and why am I bringing this up and where am I going with this? Basically what I'm asking is, I want your opinion, if you're still watching this, you can leave multiple comments in this video by the way, it won't offend me, in fact I love reading your comments, so leave as many as you want, but I wanted to ask this and I wanted to ask you directly before I just went ahead and did it. I've been told by a lot of people locally here that I should really be involved in Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for YouTubers to get money from their viewers. That's I know it sounds blunt, but that's seriously what it is to me. And I swore I would never use it. I made enough money that I was covering most of my costs on the on this channel. You know, 60, 70 bucks, like I said, it would cover an extra mod to review, it would cover someone's shipping for a prize giveaway, things like that. And with it going down so much I don't know if you've heard but YouTube has basically pulled ads on a lot of vapor viewers YouTube has pulled ads on um, anything that's kind of R-rated or basically has any swearing involved which as you know is me anyways 
but they pulled a lot of ads because of that and it's hurt me quite a bit this month what should have been a great month like i said before 60 70 dollars plus has now turned into a six dollar and 70 cent month not even enough to cover i mean not even enough to cover a coil or something to review really that that in mind okay i wanted to ask you guys about patreon first before i went ahead and did it because i don't know how you guys feel about that personally from my standpoint i was always against patreon and i was one of the people who said i will never do that for my channel i will never ask you the viewers to support me in something i love doing anyways it makes no sense to me but a lot of people have come up to me now and have asked me about this and that's why i bring it to you guys if you guys say no i'm okay with that by the way i have other ways to make money maybe not on youtube but at least in my video production life kind of thing which by the way i don't do that full time but I want to uh, maybe let's let's hold back on saying I want to actually let's put it this way I I'm interested in expanding my knowledge on video production and to do that it takes money to take courses to do more research to get the proper products you need to accommodate that which leads me of course into the microphone rant again and how I've changed it so one of the things I've done is I've actually ordered a lapel mic it's partially for this channel I will use it for this channel if given the opportunity which I think will happen quite often and if it works well enough but I also want to use it for other stuff I want to do more independent filming for myself and for different projects I want to work on outside of my YouTube channel things like promotional videos things like featured highlights for something like the vape store or the, or a vape, the vape depot here in Calgary or something like that I want to do things like that and I would like to turn that into at least a part-time kind of freelance job on the weekends or evenings or things like that. And that's kind of the other way around the Patreon aspect, but it will cut into my review time. So if you like these reviews and you want to see more reviews, Patreon would help because I don't necessarily have to take on as many freelance jobs here. But if you don't like the reviews and, or no, no, no let me rephrase that. Not if you don't like the reviews, but if you don't want to donate, or if you don't want to feel obligated to donate and you feel Patreon does that to you, first of all, just know that I don't. if I do start this Patreon account, I don't expect anyone to donate to me, okay? And I am perfectly fine with having $0 in the Patreon account. But I will be picking up more freelance work on the side to try and get my video production career or my video production hobby going forward in a way where I can actually make a little bit more money on the side. It's not the end of the world. Do I really need extra money on the side? You know, not exactly, to be honest. I make good money at the job I'm at right now. I have no complaints. I love where I work. And this isn't about finding a replacement to that. This is just about having a little extra money each month to go into certain projects I want to do, to go into maybe upgrading my camera one day, which would be nice. Maybe going into more products to give away, things like that. That's what I want to use a Patreon for is just giveaway stuff. That's why I want to do freelance work on the side. Again, going into getting into more products. The more products I can get, the more I can get to you guys and so you guys can hear my take on certain products. There are certain products I haven't reviewed because I just can't get them. And, and not that I can't, don't have access to them, but just I can't justify spending that kind of money on a product like that. Even though it might get a ton of views, at this point, I definitely can't justify it because I'll never get paid out on it. It's $6 for a month that I had a pretty good month on. I, I can't justify it. Going back again, though, to what I said earlier, I don't do these for money. I don't do these reviews for money. I really don't. Uh, yes, it's nice to have a little extra money here and there. Don't get me wrong. But this this channel is not to get money from you guys. And it's not to make money. It's not to do anything like that. It's, it's always been about the hobby. And it's always been about my passion toward vaping and being able to talk to people about what my take are or what my take is on certain devices, on certain tanks, and certain RDAs, or whatever the case may be. But it would be nice to have the lecture money so I can always keep improving. There's a course I'd love to take at the university here that's entirely on film production. It's about a thousand bucks to take for the for about a four week course, which is very reasonable. But there's no way I can afford it or justify it if this is all I'm using for my production. As far as the return on that kind of investment, it's honestly zero. The the return will never happen. It's six dollars a month. I mean, that's going to take me years to even think about making any sort of anywhere near the return I need. So Patreon would help. But again, I don't want you guys to feel like you're 
you're obligated in sending me off to film school or whatever you want to call it. It's of course, but you get what I'm saying. I don't know. I mean, Patreon, yes or no? Let me know in the comments below. See what you guys think. And maybe give me an idea of, of what you think of me doing freelance work. I mean, my videos are getting better. Do I consider myself a pro? Absolutely not. I, I know I'm light years away from being in a professional environment or at a professional level for this. I am strictly an amateur and I'm getting better, I think. But even still, I'm nowhere near where I think I should be if I want to do freelance work unless I put a lot more effort into it, a lot more resources, a lot more research, maybe even some online courses. I don't know. But that's going to that's gonna do it for that segment. Um, I did have something else I wanted to talk about here. I don't even remember what it was anymore. Uh, we talked about the wireless mic that I'm going to be getting, the wireless lab system or lavalier system. So that's going to be fun to play around with to see if it works. And uh, that's what it was, sorry. So one of the things that I've found about this, I actually went and talked to a, a broadcast production company um, about my setup because I have access to that through a family member. But I went to talk to them and I told them what my issues were. I told them I'm having these nonstop audio issues. What could be causing it? I told them my entire setup and they said that using this little thing here, this beach tech thing, what can happen is because it has to plug into the microphone jack on your camera, what happens is it gets bumped around a little bit, and moves around, and it actually causes damage to the mic or to the microphone jack in the camera itself. So by getting the Sennheiser lavalier system I'm getting, what we're gonna be doing is testing if this was just a faulty unit all along, which is entirely possible and kind of what I'm hoping for at this point, or if the mic input in my camera is actually just fucked. And if it's just fucked, then I gotta look at getting a new camera as well if I wanna use this lab system and if I do wanna do some freelance work. If I do look at a new camera, what do I look at? Do I look at getting 4K? Do I stick to 1080p? I don't know. I've done a ton of research on it. That's pretty much all I've been doing the last week is just looking at cameras, looking at mic systems. And I finally found the mic system I want. And I feel like before I go in getting a new camera, I'll want to at least test this out to see if I even need to, at least right now. Or if it's something I can hold off on, on for you know a couple months, couple, I don't know, six months, maybe a year, who knows? So, we're, I'm looking at a bunch of things, and while looking at these things, I'm also looking at my ad revenue and saying, if I strictly am buying upgrades for my YouTube channel, from a monetary standpoint, it doesn't make sense. Hopefully the audio is improved in this video, now that I'm running it off my computer. If it is or not, I'll let you guys be the judge. Honestly, what's scary is that in my editing program, which I use Final Cut Pro, when I listen to everything I've recorded, including my last videos, by the way, they all sound fine in Final Cut Pro. The issue I think that relates to that is the fact that when using Final Cut Pro, I also use speakers instead of a headphone or an iPhone to listen to my videos. And I've, I've found, and I know Jay's gonna disagree with me because we've had an argument about this, but I found that listening to my videos on an iPhone or an Android even for that matter, part of the issue might be linked to the side speaker now, I'm not saying my audio is great, and I've listened to my own videos, even on my computer on YouTube, and if I'm listening to it on my MacBook, it sounds awful. If I'm, looking to it, if I'm listening to it on my Mac Mini, which has speakers hooked up to it, it sounds a lot better, and you don't really notice any issues. So I think part of it is to do with the volume level. If the volume level is way up, then you start hearing all that static and all that echo and the tinny noise and the background noise. But if it's at a reasonable volume, like on a speaker system it would be, which is only at like 10 to 15% right now volume, and it sounds perfect, it sounds okay. And I think it just has to do with the gain on it and the sensitivity and how high you cranking up that volume level with the previous setup. Hopefully with this setup, it doesn't matter how high you crank it up, it'll be fine no matter what. But we'll, we'll find out. So that's pretty much it for today. That's what I wanted to talk about, mainly the YouTube ad revenue. Let you guys know what's going on, and kind of where I'm at and kind of get your take on the whole Patreon thing and also even the freelance work. If I am uploading videos at a less often pace, it's because I'm still making videos, just not for this channel. And I may have another channel just for the kind of production I'm gonna be hoping to do and the freelance work I hope to do just to show some work off 
to see what people think about it, get some feedback on it, maybe see if there's any techniques I might be able to implement or take advantage of in those videos that I may not be already aware of through this channel. And that's the other thing with doing the freelance work, by the way, is having the opportunity to experiment with new things that I may not have ever experienced, experienced with on this channel. And I think that's one of the parts of growing and things I learned through the freelance work I can apply to this channel and things I've already learned from this channel I can apply to the freelance work. So it works both ways. But that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know anyone who's made it this far, but if you have made it this far, comment. Comment. Oh, what are you gonna comment? Comment nut butter in the comments below. That's what I'm vaping on right now. Comment nut butter if you made it to the end of this video. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, happy vaping YouTube.